Taking just enough of this supplement daily is proven to drastically reduce your chance of losing your kidney function. It's proven to cut in half your chance of dying. And also to cut in half your chance of ending up in dialysis. Gathering here, I've been helping kidney disease patients take control of their health for more than a decade now. And taking control of your health doesn't just mean alleviating the symptoms of kidney disease. It means achieving tangible results when it comes to improving your kidney function. Results that you will be able to see written black and white at your next blood test. Yes, my aim is to help you lowering your creatinine levels and avoiding ending up in dialysis. Because today, medical literature clearly proves that having kidney disease is not a death sentence anymore. This is a disease that can be treated successfully in all the stages. And when it comes to reversing kidney disease, we have made huge steps forward in the process of finding out what works and what doesn't. What we found out is that for some patients, all that it takes is just one teaspoon a day. There have been documented cases of patients with almost no residual kidney function getting out of dialysis, mainly thanks to this supplement. In this case report, a man was on dialysis for six months. Then he was started on a renal diet and he took this supplement. He was out of dialysis in just four months. Yes, there is only one supplement that can do that. I'm talking about sodium bicarbonate. Okay, so what I want to share with you today are some new insights about the treatment that costs literally pennies and that could be used to delay dialysis by years in some cases. And yet many doctors still forget to tell their kidney disease patients how important it is to take it. So today we will learn more about how to take sodium bicarbonate to improve kidney health. Okay, now you may ask what's new about sodium bicarbonate? Well, there is a recent study about it that tested a new protocol of administration. Yes, they didn't make this study just to prove, once again, that sodium bicarbonate is an extremely safe and reliable way to protect the kidneys. They also experimented with an innovative protocol that resulted in a huge success. Their main goal here was to be able to see if giving sodium bicarbonate was going to slow down kidney disease progression. And it worked! The test subjects in this study were able to cut by two-thirds the risk of creatinine levels doubling, as we can see here. Which is basically means that the progression of their kidney disease was much, much slower. In fact, they also had less than half the chance of ending up in dialysis. And these are incredible results because they were obtained on a huge number of patients. 740! And most importantly, the only thing that was changed in their treatment was sodium bicarbonate. In short, this huge study was able to prove that sodium bicarbonate is a must if the goal is to avoid dialysis. And they also used an innovative method to administer sodium bicarbonate that you could also use. We will see it in a moment. Before that, a very important question. Is using sodium bicarbonate really going to reverse kidney disease? Well, yes, it can make a huge difference. You see, for the general population, it is almost harmless to ingest huge amounts of acid-forming foods such as meat, cheese, processed grains, sweets, and soft drinks, because their kidneys are extremely efficient at getting rid of all the acids these foods produce in the body. 
But if you have kidney problems, even following a renal diet that doesn't produce even nearly the amount of acid the Western diet produces, may cause your blood acidity to, to raise. And that could be very bad for you. It's a cause of kidney damage. This is why there are many studies confirming that kidney disease patients that take sodium bicarbonate can delay dialysis significantly. In a different study, patients in stage 4 not taking sodium bicarbonate lost renal function three times faster than those taking it. This is a very significant difference and means that taking sodium bicarbonate can delay dialysis by years, maybe decades. This is also why current guidelines state that patients in stage 4 and 5 of chronic kidney disease should take sodium bicarbonate. Okay, now you may ask, if sodium bicarbonate is so effective, why hasn't my doctor prescribed it to me? There could be two reasons why some doctors don't prescribe sodium bicarbonate. First of all, because they either don't care or don't know. Many doctors unfortunately still go by the old rule of just helping the patient manage the symptoms until they reach dialysis. And I bet this is not something you want if you are watching me right now. If this is the case, sodium bicarbonate may help you. But there could be another reason why your doctor never prescribed you sodium bicarbonate. Because maybe you don't need it. Yes, not everyone with kidney disease needs sodium bicarbonate. In fact, for some patients, following the right renal diet may be enough to keep their blood acidity under control. Yes, there are certain dietary interventions that can make a huge difference in order to protect your kidneys from excess blood acidity. And I've talked more in depth about this topic in my recent video up here and also down in the description by the way. Because you see, what this study proves is not just that sodium bicarbonate can literally save your life. It also proves that metabolic acidosis or too much acidity in the blood can literally destroy your kidneys. So the big question is, are you suffering from metabolic acidosis? Metabolic acidosis is the reason why people with kidney disease need to take baking soda. And it's also part of the reason why they also need to follow a plant-based diet. It is a complication of CKD, meaning that CKD itself causes metabolic acidosis. When the kidneys don't function at 100%, they cannot filter enough acid from the blood anymore. This acid builds up and it causes a lot of problems. It causes serum potassium to go up. Yes, for many people, taking sodium bicarbonate is actually the fastest way to lower potassium levels. Metabolic acidosis also damages the bones. It causes osteoporosis, bone and mineral disorder, and a high chance of suffering fractures. It also decreases insulin sensitivity and it raises blood sugar, causing diabetes to get worse. And it's clear that it is causes kidney disease to progress faster. This is also accompanied by a higher risk of cardiac events and death. Now, metabolic acidosis also comes with symptoms including nausea, fatigue, confusion, headaches. These symptoms, however, can be caused by a multitude of conditions and thus they are not very useful to diagnose metabolic acidosis. Extreme cases may also come with rapid, deep and long breaths and a fast heartbeat. If any of these symptoms is present, it means there is a medical emergency going on. So we can't really rely on symptoms to tell if we have metabolic acidosis. What to do instead? What every single kidney disease patient needs to do in order to stop metabolic acidosis is to do a blood test called CO2 test. This is a common test. It is usually done as part of an electrolyte or basic metabolic panel. You should do these tests every 3-6 to six months depending on the stage of kidney disease you are in. But not all doctors prescribe these tests regularly enough, so make sure you are being tested for this and the other complications of CAD, especially if you are in the advanced stages. Keep in mind that this can make all the difference between ending up in dialysis and starting to see an improvement in your kidney function and creatinine levels. 
So when you do a metabolic panel, this is one of the most important things you should look at. The level of CO2 or serum bicarbonate, the normal range is 23 to 29 milli equivalents per liter, all right? Some patients will have lower levels than that, and this is something we need to take care of. How? Well, sodium bicarbonate is used to treat this issue. So very important. What's new about the way kidney disease patients are supposed to take sodium bicarbonate? Well, in this video, we looked at a study in which a huge number of patients were able to protect their kidneys just by taking sodium bicarbonate. It's interesting that in this study, they used a more scientific way to administer sodium bicarbonate than what most people actually do. Many kidney disease patients just take one gram of sodium bicarbonate one to three times a day with water and away from meals. For some patients, this could work, especially if their CO2 levels are not too low to begin with. But there could be a better way. As we can see here, what they did in this study was simply to start from the CO2 level the patient had before the intervention and to use an equation to calculate how much sodium bicarbonate they needed every day. The idea was to get the patient to the ideal range, which is 24 to 28 milli equivalents per liter as fast as possible. So for example, if a patient had a CO2 level of 21, they would have been given 4,410 milligrams of sodium bicarbonate per day. They would have then increased the dose by 25% every week and tested again every week until the correct CO2 level was achieved. Now I get that not everyone can get tested so often, but my advice is still do this test at least every few months. It's incredibly important that you are in the right range for this level. So if you are suffering from kidney disease stage 3 to 5 and you're not taking sodium bicarbonate, talk to your doctor and do this test. Another interesting tip about sodium bicarbonate, it causes nausea to some patients. If this happens, there is also a way to take it without nausea. It's the sublingual route. For sublingual administration, you just need to place the correct quantity of sodium bicarbonate under your tongue and wait for it to dissolve. Again, consult your doctor to see if this is the right way for you. Now, some people are worried about the amount of sodium or salt in sodium bicarbonate. So the question is, is sodium bicarbonate safe if you need to limit salt intake? Sodium bicarbonate does actually contain some sodium in it. But you see, while it has been proven that excess of salt in the diet is very bad for your blood pressure, sodium bicarbonate is not an issue if taken in the correct dose. This is what a very recent meta-analysis conducted on 1,853 patients with chronic metabolic acidosis found out. In this review, those taking sodium bicarbonate actually didn't suffer from an increase in blood pressure. Taking sodium bicarbonate had dramatically reduced their blood pressure. So this remedy doesn't just protect your kidneys, but your heart too. The reason behind this is metabolic acidosis. Treating metabolic acidosis will improve several health markers including your blood pressure. But you see, even if sodium bicarbonate doesn't raise your blood pressure, it still contains sodium that should be factored in when planning a renal diet. Now, sodium bicarbonate also comes with a couple of other side effects. Some people also report stomach discomfort when taking it. Sodium bicarbonate should be always taken on an empty stomach, otherwise it will make you bloated. These issues may be relieved by taking it under the tongue. Another known issue, sodium bicarbonate may cause problems in the long run with gut flora. So you may be interested in knowing that there is an alternative to sodium bicarbonate that will still treat metabolic acidosis and delay dialysis, but that doesn't contain sodium. So what can be used instead? The other supplement that could be taken to control acidity is magnesium, especially magnesium oxide. Now keep in mind that sodium bicarbonate is the safest and the most widely prescribed way of keeping acid level in the right range today. But supplementing magnesium also has a very significant 
alkalizing effect on the body. And magnesium from supplements or from foods has a ton of health benefits. Just like for essential vitamins, you cannot live without enough of it. And most skin disease patients are also deficient in magnesium, so supplementing it will come with several extra benefits. Yes, some CKD sufferers are now being given magnesium supplements instead of bicarbonate to keep their acidity levels in balance. Now, when it comes to magnesium, my recommendation is to supplement it no matter what. Obviously, consult your doctor, but magnesium is something that almost anyone with kidney disease would benefit from. And according to studies, taking around 300 to 400 milligrams of magnesium oxide per day seems to be the best way to get most of the benefits. You will be able to know if this is enough to keep your blood acidity in check by doing a CO2 test. So yeah, in some cases, magnesium is enough. In some, it is not. Get tested. And what many people ask me about magnesium is, isn't there a better form of magnesium than magnesium oxide we can take? Well, the answer is in my recent video. It's up here and also down in description. And now you may ask, what about the diet? Well, obviously, taking magnesium or sodium bicarbonate is just part of the equation when it comes to controlling metabolic acidosis. You see, there are certain foods that have an extremely powerful alkalizing effect on the body. They can make a huge difference in terms of improved kidney health. And if you want to know more about these foods and also to try an incredibly alkalizing smoothie, my video up here is for you. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye.